Let's continue something about Psalm, cha Psalm chapter 39, verse 5 and 6. And there is this Selah again, which is warning to Adventists somewhere near the verse. It occurs again in verse 11. The Antichrist is there, see verse 1. The Jews as sojourners are there, verse 12. And the son of perdition's riches are being heaped up, verse 6. They are noted in Job chapter 36, verse 19, and are said to be found in the last days. And now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Make me not the reproach of the foolish. I was dumb, I opened not my mouth, because thou didst it. Didst it. Remove thy stroke away from me. I am consumed by the blow of thine hand. When thou with rebukes dost correct man for iniquity, thou makest his beauty to consume away like a moth. Surely every man is vanity, Selah. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear unto my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears, for I am a stranger with thee, and a sojourner as all my fathers were. O spare me, that I may recover strength, before I go hence and be no more. No hope can be put in man, in man because verse 6 has just showed us that men don't learn by their mistakes. The applause they get is often hypocritical. Their boos and hisses can be un undeserved, as well as their plaudits and credits and their worrying and getting upset about things very rarely changes anything. What do we wait for? Self-improvement? That won't do it. For a miracle? It probably won't come. For things to get better? Don't be funny. For man or mankind? They are the same now as they were a thousand years before Noah. It's God who will save me, deliver me, guide me, teach me, give me the proper goals and motivation, and He will eventually change me and transform me until then, he will help me to adjust to circumstances. My hope is in thee. You see, there is a great deal more in the verse than there is in Hebrew lexicon or an undomini septuagint. The septuagint balls the mess up com completely and says, What is my acceptation? My crown of hope is with thee. The writer, writing 100 or 200 years after Hebrews and 1st John chapter 3, where all over Asia Minor and Greek, has tried to place Christ back into the psalm. There are some things, of course, that you will wait for in vain for because they will never come. Peace on earth without glory to God in the highest, Luke chapter 2 verse 14. Feelings about salvation without openly confessing Christ and your wrongdoing. Promotion without being faithful. Conversion of the world to Christ before the Lord returns. For a local church to get out of trouble before you join it. For a perfect local church to show up. For people to stop drinking, using drugs or enjoying pornography. For any pope to take God's word against the pagan traditions of his hierarchy. For any major newscast on which anything is reported, ob reported ob objectively. When a Christian is not delivered from his transgressions, verse 8, then he is a reproach to the foolish. Accordingly, for fools not only make a mock of sin, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 9, they mock backslidden Christians who are fooling with sin. Verse 9 goes with verses 1 and 2. Verse 10 is what caused Psalm 38, verses 3 to 10. Man's beauty, verse 11, is converted to Job's appearance. Job chapter 30, verses 17 to 30. When the Lord really pulls it on, David describes his own ugliness and repulsiveness in Psalm 38, verses 3 to 11. Consume away like a moth. Verse 11 is like how a moth consumes a garment when there are no moth balls around. See Isaiah chapter 50, verse 9, Hosea 
chapter 5 verse 12 and Job chapter 13 verse 28. The scholars have some relief for the verse 11. It doesn't say that every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Verse 5, but only that every man is vanity. Note that even though David has really had it laid to him, he later thanks God for his beating. Psalm chapter 119, verses 67, 71. Here he is crying, verse 12, and you will too before you leave the veil of tears. You will be needing a bottle in which to store them. Psalm chapter 56, verse 8. I'm a stranger with thee, verse 12, is a remarkable confession. God is stranger on his own land in his own creation. See John chapter 1, verse 5. God himself acknowledge, acknowledges this in Second Samuel chapter 7, verse 6. Although it's even stranger to hear it coming from the lips of an anointed king whose nation has been in the land of possessors for nearly 400 years. The New Testament truth presented here is that this present evil world, Galatians chapter 1 verse 4, is not our home. See Hebrews chapter 11 verse 16 and chapter 13 verses 13 to 15. Someone should preach a message on the homeless creator or the wayfaring stranger or the unwanted quest. It's God for whom there is no room in the inn. Luke chapter 2 verse 7. Verse 13 is self-explanatory.